Uh, equipment you're going to need today is a letter ball. And for those of you just joining, I'll, I'll kind of explain what this is. So a ball-shaped object of some sort. Mine is deflated um, so that I can grip it easier and my clients can grip it easier for those of them that struggle with grip strength. Um, if you don't have a letter ball, anything that is exciting for your eyes to look at, like a rolled up pair of socks with a pattern on it, um, a dog toy, something of that sort. Yeah, and I see some people holding something up. Yeah, Don, yeah, Don, that, that works. It looks like you're holding up a pair of socks. Um, as long as it's like got something exciting for your eyes to look at, that's, that's really all that matters. And then the only other equipment you're gonna need is two pencils or two cooking utensils. You can use your thumbs if that's easier as well. Okay. So let's get going. Make sure I'm in the frame here. Great. Okay, so we'll come back to a seated or standing grounded position of some sort. Yeah, and we'll close the eyes. And let's just start by coming to your breath here. Seeing if you can slow your breath down. Maybe it even feels supportive to put both hands over your low belly. And for today, I want you to find, instead of our body scan, I just want you to find your awareness of the space around you. So if you're able to sense the floor or the base of your wheelchair under you, if you're able to sense the chair that you're sitting in, the space behind you. So if you're in a room, can you imagine how much space is maybe between you and the wall? And then being aware, sensing into the space in front of you. And then the spaces to the side of your body. So this is something called your kinesthetic awareness. So I want you to keep your eyes closed, but reach your arms out big and just circle your arms around your body, feeling into that sphere around you that you can reach into. So this is another word for this is your peripersonal space. So you can move about in that area, reaching up above you to the side of you, maybe even back behind you. And just being aware of your body in the space that you're inhabiting right now. Go ahead and set your intention for class today. We'll take one more inhale, one more exhale, and we'll open the eyes. Okay, so playing with that theme a little bit, I just want you to start and I just want you to look around. And you're gonna do the same thing that I was just cueing you through in class. So noticing really objectively what's around you. Okay, I've got a chair to my left. I've got a tree up to my right. You might be noticing how close the ceiling is to you, how many feet maybe there are between you and the wall. You're just objectively noting things around you. Note where the windows are and then note where the doors are. Okay, this is another way to help your body and your nervous system settle. And then we'll come back to the center and we're gonna do the same thing with our arms. So I just want you to create that big sphere around you. So just like drawing this big space, taking up all of that space in a three dimensional arena. How big can you get? Going down to the floor, up to the sky, out to the side. How much space can you take up in the space that you're in right now? Maybe out in front of you, can you reach forward? And then can you reach back behind you? This kind of work can also help with proprioception too, like knowing how far you can reach, what's realistic for you, what's safe for you to reach into. Good, and then we'll come back to the center. Awesome. Let's bring both hands up to the sky this time. Take an inhale and then exhale. Articulate your spine coming all the way down. 
And then pausing at the bottom, taking a few inhales and exhales. If it's safe for you to do so, you can slip off your shoes and socks. I'm gonna leave my socks on because this deck is very hot. <laughs> and then on your next exhale, slowly rolling yourself back up. Yep, and then we're gonna take a side bend to the left. And then I want you to twist and look to the left again, like you're reaching for something out there. And then come back to the center, hands are up still. Side bend to the right, twist and look to the right. And then back to the center. And then one more time articulating back down. Good, take an inhale at the bottom and exhale, roll yourself up. And then opening the chest up to the sky, finding a bit of extension in there. And then hands come all the way down. Good. We're gonna bring tips of the tips of your fingers to that area just under your collarbones. We'll find some tapping in that area. I'm just noticing how this area is feeling today. Are there any tender spots? I have a new tender spot that I wasn't aware of, so that's good to know. And then can we bring this down the sides of the body? And just going up and down the sides of your torso. And then if you're able to reach your low back using a soft fist or the back of your knuckles and just gently tapping your low back. Okay, and then go ahead and uh, keep the hands steady. If you're able to, I want you to lean forward and I just want you to rub that area just above your tailbone. We call this your sacrum. So you're just gonna give that area a rub as you're either rolling forward from a standing position or from a seated position. We've got a huge sheath of fascia there, just meaning a huge piece of connective tissue. And giving this a little bit of love can actually help loosen up the spine. It can help with rotation, it can help with sensory input. Okay, and then we'll come all the way back up. Okay, good. We'll come back to some of some head and neck here. So I'm just gonna be tilt your head to the left. And then tilt your head looking up at the sky. Slide the lower jaw forward. And then tilt the head to the right. And then tilt the head down, really trying to give yourself as many double chins as possible. Tuck that chin into the throat. Let's do that one more time. Tilt head to the left. Tilt head, look up at the sky. Look right up there. Tilt your head to the right. And then tuck your chin in looking down. Okay, good. I just want you to rotate your head to the left. And just keeping your head and neck for those of you that have hardware in your neck, you can do this more from the torso, but otherwise just stay with your head and neck. And then just with your eyes, what's the furthest thing to the left that you can see? Furthest, furthest thing that you can see. And then come back to the center. Yep, tilt just the head and the neck to the right. Same thing here. What's the very furthest thing you can see? Really pushing your eyes here. And then back to the center. Okay, let's start to bring the spine into this. So. Head looks to the left and then body looks to the left. We can reach out with our left arm. What's the furthest thing we can see? No double vision here. Make sure you can still see clearly for whatever it is you're looking at. And then back to the center. Head looks to the right, whole body looks to the right, reaching. And then back to the center. Yeah, let's do that one more time each side. I, I like to have you hold at the very end because it really challenges your eyes to go a little bit further. So you're just holding for a few seconds at the end of each one. Yep, and back to the center. 
head left, body left. That's it. And then back to the center. Okay, good. Go ahead and shake the hands out. Shake the arms out. You can shake the legs if you're standing. Okay. And then we're gonna come to the ears. I'm gonna scoot in here. We're gonna grab the ear lobes using your hands or your knuckles. Okay, so if grip strength is kind of hard, you can put one of your knuckles into um, just kind of that superficial outside part of your ear. Otherwise, I want you to grab the earlobes and pull down and back behind you. A good amount of traction here, but don't overdo it. And just hold that for a few seconds. And as you hold that, I want you to dart your eyes left, right, left, right, left, right, holding the ears like that. Yeah, but head stays steady as you do this. So you're just picking a couple things to dart the eyes between and then go ahead and release that. Mm -hmm. Grab the tops of your ears. You're gonna pull up and back behind you. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing, but eyes are gonna go up, down. So pick two things in front of you, quickly darting your eyes up, down, up, down, focusing on one before you switch to the other. Keep that traction on your ears. Oh my gosh, that is a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Go ahead and release the ears. Wow, that was really a good one. Okay. You're going to take both hands. You're going to cup over the ears. Okay, just hold there for a sec. Close your eyes. Tuck your chin into your throat. And then open your eyes. Tilt your head up and look up. Keep your ears covered here. Again, this is just a way to calm the nervous system here. Look down, close your eyes, tuck your chin into your throat. Last one, look up with your eyes and your head. And then back to the center. Okay, last thing we're gonna do, let me put my headphones back on. We'll take soft knuckles right under the cheekbones and we're just gonna find that cheekbone drag going all the way down to your lower jaw. Let your jaw hang slack as you do this one. So we should be moving along a piece of um, a few muscles here, all along kind of the back outside part of the jaw. If anything is hurting you in this area, don't force it. Let the jaw go slack as you drag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good one to notice. Is there a difference between your left and your right side? Is this more tender or less tender than last week? Has anything changed in there for you? Okay, good. And relax, let's shake the hands out. And then we'll bring hands or knuckles together. We'll give the hands a rub. Getting the back of the hands. Okay, and if you're able to grab each finger and find that bottle cap twist for each finger, I'm just gonna have you go through maybe five or six twists per finger, working your way down. If it's hard for you to grab each finger, you can just use your knuckles and rub as much of that uh, finger as you've got access to working your way down. Okay, so bottle cap twisting, or rubbing. If you're doing a bottle cap twist, it's nice to give each finger a little bit of traction. So I'm pulling that finger away from my hand as I'm twisting back and forth. Giving a squeeze to the tip of the finger at the very end uh, of each one. As I've said before, the joints are a place where we store a lot of our energy where we store a lot of, um, for lack of a better word here, trauma. So maybe past injuries, past things that have happened. It's really easy for that energy and those injuries to get stuck in the joints. This is coming more from the Eastern medicine world. So the joints are really important to give attention to. Let's come to one of your wrists. I'm just gonna have you circle around that wrist, circling or rubbing. 
And if you can, maybe opening and closing that hand as you circle around the wrist. And then we'll switch sides, opening and closing the hand, circling around the wrist. Yep. And then coming to one of your elbows. And again, just finding that same circle around. This can be a really tender area, especially closer to the forearm. For those of you that are on a computer, on your phone, driving. Yep. And then we'll do the other side, circling around that elbow. Okay, good. And then we're just gonna find some, oops, we're gonna find some tapping here coming around the shoulder. You can give a rub too if that feels better. Getting the top of the shoulder underneath. Let's go right to the other shoulder. Underneath the top, the back, if you can reach the back, like you're giving yourself a pat on the back. Yeah. Okay, good. And then we'll find a few elbow circles. So just circling the hands around the elbows. See if you can keep your hands wide as you do this. Mm -hmm. And then switching directions. Yeah, and then we'll just bring that right into full arm circles. I'm gonna go backwards at first. Both arms are moving at the same time. And let your sh shoulders really shrug up as the arms come up. Just let them move through that full range of motion, shrugging up and unshrugging. Mm -hmm. Good, last one. And then back to the center, nice. Okay, let's just finish out our tapping. We'll work our way coming down the outsides of the legs and then coming up the insides of the legs. If you're able to give your feet a rub on the way up, go for it. We'll go through that three times. Again, noticing if anything feels different here today compared to last week, compared to last month. Don't know if I did two or three times, so I'm just gonna go one more time through here. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's give the feet a little bit of love because I think we missed these last week. So if you're able to reach the feet, you can grab your foot and let's just start with pulling the, fing the fingers, pulling the toes down and trying to see if you can see all five of the base of your toe knuckles pushing through. So you're gonna pull the toes down and then you're gonna pull the toes back, back and forth like that. Do that a handful of times and then you're gonna come into that toe weaving, moving your hand like a wave. Uh, to get that forefoot a bit more mobilized. For those of you where it's hard to reach your feet, but you're able to reach your lower leg, let's do some compressions today. So, oh, let's see, I don't think you can see me here. So, squeezing low by the ankle, holding for a second or two, and then working your way up. Squeeze, work your way up. Squeeze, work your way up until you get to the knee and then starting over, going from ankle to knee. If that is hard for you to reach, we can work from knee to hip and we'll do the same thing. You can either do compression by grabbing your thigh or you can just lean into it using the heel of your palm or if it's even easier for you to use your elbow or your forearm, you can do that too. Sinking in, holding for a second and working your way up. Okay, so whatever you're able to access here, you can do your whole leg if you want to. But whichever part of your leg you're doing, it's nice to be aware of where are your tender spots if you're able to sense into that. And if you're not able to sense into that, 
where do you press on your lower body that maybe elicits a spasm, okay? Because that can also be indicative of maybe an area that's tender or an area that needs an extra little bit of love and attention. For example, for me, it's usually the insides of my legs, okay? For you, it might be more the outsides. It might be underneath your legs. But do you have a certain line that maybe feels a little bit more tender? Okay, go ahead and switch legs if you haven't already. Moving the toes, compressing the lower leg or compressing the upper leg. Yeah, the reason that I, for those of you that are working on your feet, the reason I, I want you to be able to see all five of your toe knuckles uh, is to make sure that those toe knuckles aren't what we call, um, to make sure they're not depressed, meaning sunken down inward. A lot of these days, the shoes we wear, regardless of whether you're walking or not, pull our toes up and depress our toe joints down. So it's nice to mobilize the feet in the opposite direction. That's wh why I'm cueing you to do that today. Yeah. And if that's hard for reach, you're working your way up the lower leg and or you're working your way up the upper leg. And then noticing how does this leg feel different from the other leg? Does it feel more restricted? Does it feel better? Maybe there's less spasms in this leg. Maybe there's less or more sensation in this leg. Maybe this leg feels like it's a different temperature. Maybe it's a different color. Okay, so what are you noticing about this leg? The more information that we take in about our body, the better off we're gonna be. Okay, good, go ahead and shake that off. Awesome. Tilt this back up here. Okay, good. Let's come right into playing letter ball. So I'll have you grab your letter ball if you've been playing with me for a while and you know what you're doing. You're going to go right into it. I'm just going to put more air in my ball here. Um, if you're new with us today, and I see maybe a couple new names, I'm just going to go ahead and explain this here. Okay, so holding that, that letter ball into your chest, you're going to pull it away from your body at any angle that you want any angle around your body, you're quickly gonna look at the ball, say the first letter or number that you see, and then pull it back into your chest. Pull it away from your chest, say the first letter or number you see, pull it back into your chest, okay? And you're just gonna do that all around your body at different angles, saying the first letter or number you see, pulling it behind you, pulling it down towards the ground, pulling it up above you. Yeah, and just moving it around. If you're able to play catch with yourself, you can play catch with yourself, which just makes it a little bit harder, a little less predictable. But again, still trying to throw the ball at different angles around your body. If you have a bouncy ball, you could bounce it off of the, the floor or off of a wall by you. I'm gonna have you do several more throws and then I'm gonna layer on with some brain speed gains. I'm just gonna watch people here for a sec. Yep, that looks good. Yeah, making sure that you're looking at the socks if you're able to each time you bring it to a new position. Bringing that ball overhead Bring it down. Yep, there you go. Make sure you're looking at it, Don. Yep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah, nice, Kathy. You've got a bouncing one. Yep, that's great. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and layer on. Okay, so let me make sure I'm getting this right. Every time you catch a letter, I just have to mirror you here. Every time you catch a letter, I want your 
let's do this. I want your left hand to tap your right knee. Okay, we're just gonna get in some cross body connection. So when you see a letter, tap left hand to right knee. Or if you're holding the ball, you can even just like tap your knuckles to the, to the knee. Uh, every time you catch a number, I want your right hand to touch the left leg or the left knee, okay? So letter, left hand taps opposite, number, right hand taps opposite. Okay, we got it. Letter, left tapping opposite, number, right tapping opposite. <laughs> I just showed you the reverse, but you know what I'm doing. Okay, okay, so keep playing. And you're trying to do that movement as quickly as you can once you catch the letter or the number. Okay. Letter left hand taps across, number right hand taps across. Yeah. Remember these brain speed games are really good for anything in the decision-making realm that um, requires your body to make a decision. So my, my go-to example I always use is, you know, let's say you're merging across a lane and you see a car coming next to you and you have to make a quick decision to peel back over if it's safe for you to do so. Okay, so that's, that's depends on how quickly your brain can make a decision and how quickly your body can react. So these kinds of games can be really good for the brain and for the body. Let's do maybe about 10 more throws or so. Yep, that looks good, everybody. Making sure you're hitting different angles above you, below you. Yeah. Okay, once you've done those 10 throws, you can set the ball down. We'll grab your pencils or your cooking utensils or your thumbs, whatever is easy for you to use here. Okay, great. Okay. Okay. So playing a little bit more um, with some with the visual system here. So let's just start. You can have your right hand resting. Left hand is going to be out in front of you, and you're going to turn and rotate with that left hand. If you're able to see the tip of the pencil, I want you to look at the tip of the pencil. You're gonna stay in that rotated position, keeping your head level. You're gonna lift the pencil up and then lift the pencil down and your eyes are following the pencil without your head moving. For folks that are blind or visually impaired, I'm gonna have your head move with the pencil. So your nose basically follows the pencil. Everybody else, I want the head to stay steady just as the pencil moves. Yep, and then come back to the center. That looks good. And then do the same thing on the other side. Right hand out in front of you. Open and rotate. Go as far as you can with your eyes and then move the pencil up and down, up and down. And if it's hard for you to hold the pencil, remember you can always use excuse me, points in the room looking up and down if it's hard for you to be reaching with a pencil like that. Yep, Bonnie, that's good standing, nice. <laughs> well, it might not be easy, but, but it looks good. <laughs> yeah, good, and then come back to the center. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you continue with that, but you're just gonna do eight each side and then you're gonna to switch to the other side. So we'll rotate the other way. You're gonna move the pencil up one, down two, up three, down four, up five, down six, up seven, down eight, come back to the center and then switch sides. Rotate up and down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, back to the center. Okay, each time you rotate, can you push it a little bit more? Can you push your eyes? Can you push that rotation? Can you move the pencil further? Can you strain your eyes a little bit more? 
I forgot to give my disclaimer in the beginning of class. If you get dizzy, uh, nauseous, tired eyes, red eyes, watery eyes, that's okay, but it means that you've hit your limit. So go ahead, take a break, grab some water, close your eyes, um, and make sure you don't push past that edge. Yeah, let's all maybe just do one more. That's looking really good though, everybody. Don't worry, I'll give you a longer break after this one. Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> we'll put the pencils down. Okay, we'll close the eyes and we'll slowly find an articulation coming down to the ground. Keep the eyes closed here. Take a couple of breaths into the back of your ribs. And then slowly roll yourself back up. Okay. We're gonna come into a little bit more vestibular work here. So we're all gonna be doing the same thing. Um, again, especially move at your own pace, especially if you haven't done this kind of vestibular work before. Okay. Uh, let me let me walk you through a couple of options and then we'll jump in because once I get talking everyone ends up doing like a thousand repetitions and it's <laughs> can get to be a lot. Okay, so for folks that are seated. Uh, if you're in a power chair and you're able to spin the power chair around, then you can do that. Okay, if you're in a spinning chair, you can also do the same thing where you're kind of spinning yourself around. Uh, if you're in a chair that is kind of hard to move, we're just going to cross the arms over the chest and you're just going to find a circling of your head and your chest around your ribs. So circling around quickly, your eyes stay open. Okay, so the goal of this is almost to emulate something like a roller coaster, challenging the vestibular system here. And then if you're standing, you could do the same idea where you're just spinning yourself in a circle. Okay, regardless of which variation you're doing, make sure that you spin in an even number of directions in both ways. Start slow if you haven't done this before, uh, and then start with maybe a smaller range of motion that you're moving through. If you have done this before, you can, yeah, you, you can go faster, you can go bigger, or if you wanna make the spins harder if you're in a chair, then you can add a head nod up and down. I know we have a lot of variations. So if you're using your chair and that's too easy, just as you turn and spin, you can add a head nod as you do that there. Okay, so the goal is just to really get that inner ear moving as much as you can. Don't push it, maybe anywhere from six to 12 circles in each direction. And then take a break, reassess, see how you're doing, okay? And also be mindful you're not tossing the head or the neck around too much and that we're stabilizing there. Yeah. Okay, once you've done an even number in each direction, I'll have you come back to the center, no rush. Yeah, come back to the center. Let's just find one more slow, heavy roll down to the ground. That one always toasts me a little bit. We'll take one more inhale. And then we'll roll up on your exhale. Okay, nice work, everybody. Okay, let's come into a little bit more spinal mobility here. So hands can be on your hips. I'm just gonna uh, show you my side profile. And we're just gonna start with our, our hip lift and tuck. If it's challenging for you to get this moving from the hips, you're gonna do this more from your ribs, flexing the ribs back, pulling the ribs forward. Exhale to flex, inhale to lift. If you wanna do it from the hips and the ribs to really make it an exaggerated motion, you can do that too. Yeah, and then I want you to see if you can make it a little bit more of a roller coaster. Okay, so lifting the ribs forward, and then you're gonna start from your head, 
your chin, your chest, and you're gonna articulate yourself back down. So we're kind of in this rounded slumped position. And then start lifting from your head, pulling the chest forward. So like a wave-like motion to lift and a wave-like motion to flex back. Hmm. Starting from the head to pull forward, starting from the head to round back. Okay, so just moving through that there, noticing where your sticky spots are. Yeah, so think of like your spine following your head. When I lift the head, the spine, the chest follows. When I flex the head and look down, the spine and the chest follows. Almost as if you were doing like the snake is that a dance move? Is that a thing? The snake? Is that right? <laughs> okay, good. And then coming back to the center. Okay, let's bring that right into a translation. So I'm going to have you either take your fists, like you're angry. Okay, so fists come to the outside of your ribs there or open hands. And your fists and, and or your hands are just going to help your ribs glide in that translation from left to right. Try to keep your shoulders and your ribs parallel with the floor here. So not a sign bend, but a translation. There we go, that looks good. Yeah, and then we're gonna add a reach with that. So I want you to translate to the left and then you're gonna reach to the left. And then I want you to turn and look over that left shoulder and unshrug that left shoulder. Okay, and then come back to the center. Translate ribs right, reach to the right, unshrug that shoulder look over that right shoulder and then center. Translate left, reach, unshrug, look over the shoulder and center. Translate, reach, unshrug, look over the shoulder. Okay, can we start to make that a little bit more fluid? Translate, reach, unshrug, look. Translate, reach, unshrug, look. Mm -hmm. Translate, reach, unshrug, look. Translate, reach, unshrug, look. And then moving a little bit quicker from side to side. Finding something with your eyes to pinpoint on. The worm dance, that's what it's called. Thank you, Sarah Don. The snake, what is that? Who am I? The worm dance, yes. <laughs> I knew the snake didn't sound right, but thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, we'll come, we'll come back to the center. Let's take the hands, interlacing the fingers, bringing them behind the head. Yeah, if that's too hard, we can also cross the arms in front of the chest. And we're just going to round the upper spine here. So trying to touch my nose into the middle of my chest, and then coming back up to the center, taking that into a side bend. Hold the side bend, and then I'm gonna have you rotate up towards the sky, holding the side bend. Take a breath into the open ribs, and then back to the center. Yep, side bend right, rotate up. Take a breath into the open ribs, and then center. Yeah, just a couple more. Side bend, rotate up, inhale, Exhale, center. Last one. Side bend. Rotate up. Inhale. And exhale, center. Good. Bring the arms down. Give everything a shake. Okay, awesome. Okay. Let me just check how we're doing. Great. All right. Let's just finish with a little bit of uh, quick coordination here. So I'm going to have you. Uh, let's see. Let me make sure I'm saying this right. Rotate to your left, and you're gonna take left hand and tap your right shoulder, okay? You're gonna rotate to your right, right hand taps opposite shoulder. Rotate left, hand taps opposite shoulder, left hand taps opposite shoulder. Rotate right, right hand taps opposite shoulder. Okay, so I just want you to go back and forth with this. Rotate, tap rotate, tap. For those of you that are standing, if you want to bring this into an alternating march, so hand taps opposite knee, 
You can do that instead. Otherwise, we'll stay with the shoulders. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna layer on with that. So shoulder tap on one side, shoulder tap on the other side. Uh, let's all maybe move together. So let's rotate back to your left. And then your left hand is gonna tap your left hip. So now we're doing same side. And then you're gonna rotate right, right hand taps right hip, okay? So rotate, opposite tap, rotate, opposite tap. Rotate, same side tap, rotate, same side tap. Rotate, opposite shoulder, rotate, opposite shoulder. Rotate, same side hip, rotate, same side hip. Opposite shoulder, opposite shoulder, same side hip, same side hip. Okay, once you start to get that and you can go a little bit quicker, I want you to start to go a little bit quicker. Okay, so really just challenging the brain here to do opposite taps and then to do same side taps. Just gonna watch people. Yes, the quicker you go, the harder this will be. Now we're <laughs> oh my God, this is the Macarena. Wow, thank you everybody. I knew that there was another word for it. <laughs> some people call it coordination, some people call it the Macarena, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm just going to layer on one more time. Let's go. So opposite shoulder, opposite shoulder, same side hip, same side hip. You're going to turn back to the left, tap your opposite ear, turn to the right, tap your opposite ear. Okay? So similar to the shoulder taps except it's an ear. Shoulder, shoulder, same side hip, same side hip, uh, opposite ear, opposite ear. Shoulder, shoulder, hip, hip, ear, ear. <laughs> now we are fully, fully doing the Macarena. If I had that pulled up on my Spotify, I would play it for you right now. <laughs> okay, go ahead and relax. <laughs> okay, let's give the whole body a shake. Shaking the ribs, the shoulders. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, let's reach arms up to the sky, interlace the fingers if you can. Take one final roll down. Take a couple of breaths into the ribs. And then we'll roll up on that last exhale and arms come back down to the side. Yeah, let's just do a few shoulder, shoulder circles. Finding your breath. Yeah, and then we'll come to a still point. We'll close the eyes. Finding your breath. Yeah, and I just want you to imagine that same sphere of space around you, okay? You can reach your arms out or you can just stay still here, but just being aware of that space in front of you, to the sides of you, back behind you, and then even underneath you. Okay, so what does your floor or base of support look like? Go ahead and think of one thing you're grateful for today. We'll take one more inhale. One more exhale. And we'll open the eyes. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining today, everybody. Let me